I'm going to investigate the centre of gravity for the Ranger 1600. Uh, I have a 3000S. Uh, where is it? It's about there, so it's a couple of inches back right from the from the tip, which is, puts the centre of gravity right on the marks. So let's have a little bit of a fly like that. Wonderful plane, powerful, got enough weight to uh, not worry too much about the wind. That's just flying beautifully, level. Lifting up a bit going into the wind. Plenty of speed and power and penetration, love it. Going a bit nose up, so I'll trim it. Trim it to fly level, although the wind is going to uh, confuse matters a bit. Bit of wind. Do a bit of a stall test. Just drops and recovers. Yeah, very nice. So totally controllable. No bad habits. Cruising along nice and steady. Just gliding it in now. Right, I'm going to move the battery back a little bit to move the CG back. Back even further. Six millimetres behind the CG lines. Let's fly that. Still flying nicely. No bad habits yet. Going a bit nose up so I can trim it forward a bit. But I really can't detect a lot of difference. Certainly not any twitchier really, apart from the turbulence. Gliding it in now. Have to go around again. <laughs> See the turbulence there in the wind. Just not no dramas at all, even though the CG is six millimeters behind the manufacturer's recommended. Sweet. All right, we'll move back a bit for, further now. About as far as I can go without losing the battery. A long way behind. Yeah, we're a good, uh, say, 11 or 12 millimetres behind, I think. I'd call that 12 millimetres behind the manufacturer's recommended CG. Yeah, it's a little bit more twitchy now, but still, still not a problem. This is such a forgiving plane. It has a long tail moment, I think, so that probably helps stabilising it. 
but I'm having no problems at all flying this. It's not overreacting at all. Even though there's a fair bit of wind. Not even looking like complaining. Gliding it in, like, oh yeah, and glides nicely at that. Very forgiving for CG. I'm a full 12 millimeters behind the CG marks. I can't really go back any further unless I add tail weight. Don't really want to do that. I suppose I could, just for science. What I can do is change to a lighter battery. I have a, a 2200 4S. That'll make a big difference. So now I'm about 15 millimeters behind the, the lines. Getting a bit scary now. It's a bit more pitchy now. Yeah, a little bit more twiddly. But still flyable. That'd be a good uh, slope soaring CG. That's, that's still fine. That's <laughs> not, not overreacting at all. I need to go back further. Gonna glide on past. And this is as far as I'm gonna go. So we're just in front. We're just a few millimeters in front of those plywood spars now. That's a long way back. Wish me luck. Still going well. It's more responsive now, but not uncontrollable. Wants to climb. There's a stall, just same sort of stall, just, just wants to dip the nose and pick up speed again. Certainly not wanting to tip stall. And the CG is probably 20 millimeters back from the recommended. This is a very, very forgiving plane. Struggling to make it unstable, amazing. There's the glide. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Not many planes could handle that. Let's check the CG again. That's a good 40% back. A gust of wind. Yes, yeah, definitely just in front of that <laughs> plywood spa. That's ridiculous. Amazing. This really is one of my favourite planes. Uh, it's like a, a, a Bixler on steroids. It's got more power, uh, more wing area, longer moment arm on the rudder, so it's very, very uh, directionally stable. Tough plastic fuselage. It's a narrow space to get stuff in, but there is a, a lot of space in there to put bigger batteries and flight control boards and things like that. Click in wings just can't fault it really, it's just wonderful.